Okay, hi everybody. It is that time of year again. It's Booktubeathon time. So I am coming at you today with my TBR for Booktubeathon. If you're somehow not aware, Booktubeathon is a very large readathon. I will put information for it down below, but I'm sure you all know about it. It's very, very popular, very big. It's super, super fun. I've had a really good time every time I have participated. I would highly encourage you to do so. And so today, let's just talk about my books that I plan to read during the week of Booktubeathon. I'll go over my books and then I'll talk about the challenges at the end and how I'm gonna kind of fit them all together. Because a lot of the challenges I could use for several different books. So first up we have Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. Ella Enchanted is a really classic children's book. I think that I did read this as a kid like a really long time ago but I really don't have very many memories of it so this is going to be a super fresh perspective for me. I've been meaning to read this or reread this whatever the case actually is um, for a really long time. It is a fantasy story about a girl who is cursed with the gift of obedience so everything someone tells her to do she has to obey them. I think that this is a very feminist story, it's a really classic fairy tale, and I'm just happy about it, very excited. The next book on my list is I Know What You Did Last Summer by Lois Duncan. This is a YA thriller about, I believe, some high schoolers who do something terrible and it haunts them. Something like that. I kind of know the plot mostly because of the movie that's based on it, but I don't know a lot about the actual book. It's a really, really short book, and it's obviously a mystery thriller sort of situation, so I'm thinking that I'll be able to get through it super quickly. It'll just be a really, really intense, fun read, and I don't want to know too much about it going into it beyond what I already know. The next book on my list is Damselfly by Chandra Prasad. This is a book that I haven't really heard about, but I just found looking around on my library for possible reads, and I really, really love this cover. It is so, so pretty. There are so many details on this cover that are amazing, and the plot sounds super interesting as well. It is about a bunch of private school teenagers who are in a plane crash, and they're now surviving on this deserted island. We've got a lot of tropes in here, um, but it's <laughs> such a good setup. I think that this could be poorly done, but oh my goodness, it sounds like it could be so, so fun. I love this idea so much. I'm just really, really hoping for something wild and intense and just awesome with this book. Again, I'm going in a little bit blind and I haven't read like any reviews or seen anybody else talking about it so I have no idea really what the expectation with this is going to be in terms of where the story is going to go or what the quality is going to be like. I'm just pretty much hooked by that initial premise and this amazing cover so we're hoping it's good. The next book is a middle grade book. It's True and Danelle by Jean Airy. This has been on my radar for quite a while. I've been kind of meaning to read this book. It is a fictionalized account of the childhood friendship between Harper Lee and Truman Capote, which was a real thing. They were friends as children, which is so cool. And it just follows these two kids like in Alabama meeting each other and forming a friendship. It sounds like it's going to be really, really cute and sweet. My only like reservation going into this book is that I actually like have not read anything by Harper Lee and Truman Capote so if the book intends for you to be familiar with those authors going into it I might miss something but assuming that it doesn't which I don't really think it is because I do think this is a middle grade book so like children should be able to read this book I think that this will be a, an interesting and really fun read. The next book on my list is another exciting one. I mean, they're all exciting, but this one is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Everybody is so obsessed with Taylor Jenkins Reid right now. I need to try one of her books. I just have heard the most incredible things about this author. I just like feel like there's no way I'm not going to enjoy her books. Obviously I think the most popular and the most talked about book of hers is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but I actually 
don't really want to start with that one because it's the one that has so much praise. I feel like I don't want to start with like the best work of hers and then be kind of disappointed by her other books. So I think I want to start with an older work of hers, see how I like her writing, and then try Evelyn Hugo and read that incredible book that nobody can shut up about. I also am very, very interested in this book um, for a reason that I feel like I cannot share because of spoilers, but I will just say that the plot of this book, when I read the synopsis, sounds like a television show that I am watching and I need to read it because of this TV show that I watch. And I don't wanna say what show it is because I will super, super spoil what's going on in that show right now. But it's a TV show that I really, really enjoy and the most recent season finale introduced this plot line and I'm dying to get into the next season. But basically, anyway, <laughs> One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid is about a girl who marries her high school sweetheart. They are happy and in love, but then he's in a helicopter and goes missing. Everyone assumes that he's dead, and so she mourns this loss, moves on with her life, and has met a new person, and has moved on. And then after she has developed a relationship with this new person, her old husband comes back and he's not dead. And so she has to decide what she's gonna do. I'm so ready for this drama. I'm so ready to like invest myself in one of these two men and like try to figure out which one she's gonna choose and like root for one of them. I'm, I'm very excited about this book. And like I said, I'm especially excited about it because of the TV show I'm watching that has a very similar plot line and I need to know how this book tackles it so I have like a new perspective for when I start watching how the show is gonna do this same plot line. Yeah. The next one on my list is Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. This is a book that I have been highly, highly anticipating. It is a young adult contemporary story about an asexual teen and her dating life. I never get to see asexuality represented in fiction. So a young adult contemporary that puts that at the forefront makes me very, very happy. And I just am so, so excited to support and read this book. The protagonist and the author of this book are also black women. And so again, I just, so happy to like read this book and give it my love. I've heard that this book is just like a really kind of cute young adult contemporary. That's my jam. I love good, sweet YA contemporaries. They're books that I can read super, super quickly and I like always get really, really into. So I figured it would be perfect for the readathon. And yeah, it just came at a good time because my uh, library added the audiobook and I just picked it up immediately and so. I wasn't expecting to add this to my TBR, but I did at the last minute and I'm pretty happy about it. And then the last book that I plan on reading is a graphic novel because you've got to throw a graphic novel in there during Booktubeathon. And I have chosen The Backstagers by James Tinian IV and Ryan Tsai. This is a graphic novel that takes place at an all boys school and it follows, I think, kind of like a misfit group of friends that find each other because they're all working tech in the theater. I've heard really good things about this. This premise is so, so perfect for me. I love the look of the art style. I'm loving this idea. I just, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that I think that this has like a ton of queer rep, like lots of different identities and lots of different characters and diversity going on in this book so obviously I needed to read this at some point. I'm hoping it's a series that I'm really going to enjoy and it's going to be like a new favorite for me to be following because there are more volumes so lots more stuff for me to explore with this series. As for the reading challenges, let's get into them. The first challenge is to let a coin toss decide your first read. Let me go get a coin, hold on. I think between my first read, I'm gonna pick Ella Enchanted and I Know What You Did Last Summer. Ella Enchanted because that's the one that I actually wanna read first and then it, I Know What You Did Last Summer is my other choice because I figured that book will be super, super quick and easy to read. So if that's my pick, I'll read that one very quickly and then move on to Ella Enchanted. So 
let's say heads is Ella Enchanted and tails is I Know What You Did Last Summer. Is that how you do a coin toss? Okay. Oh, it's heads. It's heads. Here it is on my hand. That is the head of a quarter. Um, good old George Washington. Is that who's on the quarter? <laughs> I think so. Okay, so the first read I'm going to be reading is Ella Enchanted, thank God. The second challenge is to read a book about something you want to do. I actually struggled with this challenge so hardcore. I couldn't find any books that were like about things I want to do, weirdly. <laughs> Even just looking at my TBR list, you can see it's like book about a girl who has a curse on her, book about some students who were in a plane crash and stranded on a desert island, book about students who are being haunted by their terrible past like I, I don't want to do these things um and apparently none of the books that I like want to read are about things that I want to do anyway long story short eventually I picked backstagers because theater is something that I always want to be doing I love theater to my core so anything involving theater is like something I want to be experiencing and doing at all times of my life so I'm glad that I found that book at the very last second and added it for that challenge. The third challenge is to read a book and watch a movie adaptation. If I'm able to track down a copy of I Know What You Did Last Summer, I think that'll be an interesting movie to watch the um, adaptation of after the book. I have not seen that movie, but if I don't feel like it or I don't find a copy of it, I will be watching Ella Enchanted on Netflix because I know it's on Netflix and I love that movie. I have seen that movie so many times. Like, it's one of my most watched films ever. It is one of my favorite movies. I know that it's not similar to the book at all. I am very, very aware of this, but the movie pretty much takes the premise of the book and just kind of does its own thing with it. And it's so weird. It's like quirky and whimsical and cheesy as all get out but like so fun and entertaining i just love ella enchanted so much it has everything that i like in a feel-good film i will be 100 percent happy to watch that movie anytime during that week so if i don't feel like doing i don't know what you did last summer i'll just be watching my old favorite which is ella enchanted I love that movie so much. The fourth challenge is to read a book with green on the cover. A lot of my books have like a little bit of green. I guess for my pick I'm going with One True Loves because there's a lot of green foliage like in the letters of the title on that cover. So that has green on the cover for sure. The fifth challenge is to read a book while wearing a hat. I'm not a huge fan of this. I don't like own really any hats except for winter hats and it's so hot this summer. I don't want to be wearing a winter hat. The only other hat I could really find in my house was this one, which which is a weird pig hat that I have in my house. It even has like a little tail, which is kind of cute. Yeah, this is the only other hat I could find, unless you like want me to go into my basement and dredge up my winter hats. So that might be happening. Don't really know what book I'm going to be using this for. Probably I Know What You Did Last Summer because, like I said, that one I feel like is going to be the fastest book for me. So I want to get get that over with as, as quickly as I possibly can. The sixth challenge is to read a book with a beautiful spine. This one was a little bit hard for me as well, mostly because I do all of my reading on audio so I have all of these books checked out as audiobooks for my library and you can't see the spines with them so it's really hard to like browse through shelves and looking for a pretty spine. What I actually had to do for all of these was take potential books that I wanted to read and then type in onto Google like the title of the book and then I ended up having to type in the word bookstagram into Google as well because that's where I was getting like all the fancy like nice pictures. But eventually I did find the spine of True and Nell and the second I saw that I was like oh yes that is the one because I think the spine on True and Nell is stunning it was like oh like just so pretty the instant I saw it I'll show a picture of it here it has like the ladder going up the tr to the tree house I just love the way that looks it's so so pretty and then the last challenge is to read seven books which I am hoping to do I have seven books on my TBR and I will try to read them all it's definitely going to be hard to do booktubeathon because I work a full-time job so working 40 hours a week and reading a book a day is honestly probably not going to be possible 
but I'm gonna give it a shot and I really really am very excited about every individual book on my TBR. I just have good feelings about them. I definitely know that things are not going to go my way the entire readathon and I'm going to be thrown for a loop by something, but as of right now I'm feeling great and I have been in a really good reading mood in the past month, so I feel like I'm in a great mindset to start book two with on and I just am hoping to do well. I guess we'll just see. I hope I get her done. I probably will be vlogging the whole thing. Don't know if I'm going to be participating in the video challenges or not. Otherwise, I definitely will be tweeting about book two with on on Twitter. You can come find me there and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.